Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. In the upper right hand corner, we have Invisible Man Lol, aka Invisible Man from Invisible Man St or Invisible Men Studios, which you can find on YouTube. If you've ever seen one of those short clip things on YouTube of the Artosis Raid videos, Rage videos, 90% of the time those are created by Invisible Men. So go check out his YouTube channel, they're quite hilarious. He's also a pretty decent player. Bottom left hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the Yellow Zerg. And you guys know Rancor, because we saw a ton of Rancor during Fighting Spirit Mania, and I'm hoping to see him in the later stages of the bracket. This is going to be on Eclipse, Game 1 of BSL Season 14 Hasu League, Group B, and Group B is particularly stacked, because you got Rancor, who's an amazing player, you got Invisible Men Studios, who's an incredible player, you've got Kiko on the other side, who's an incredible Terran, and you've got Doodle, and Doodle honestly has, uh, I'm expecting Doodle to go far this season. I don't know why. I just have kind of that gut instinct seeing Doodles play. Doodles a great player. If you By the way, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to BWCL Veer who's also been covering Revolution Veer has been covering various leagues and whatnot. I recommend you go check him out, but he's been covering BWCL in particular and he might come alongside to do Hasu League or Chobu League once again. Other casters out there. It looks like we're seeing an Overpool build for Rancor, Forge Opener for Invisible Man. Invisible Man does want to scout this as soon as possible. It looks like he's going to send the probe scout the long way around to avoid the Overlord scout, potentially. Or maybe to set up a... I can't imagine this is going to be a proxy pylon. This is... I like the decision to go for the opening pool because oftentimes when you open up 12 hatch, you have to deal, especially against Protoss, you're opening up Forge first. You got to deal with, uh, you know, potential proxy pylon shenanigans, things like that in this uh, right corner so you don't have to deal with it. It looks like that this uh, drone hiding momentarily to go ahead and get that initial hatchery down without too much trouble. But what this is going to do is, upon seeing this hatchery and only the two Zerglings being produced, what Invisible Men knows is that these Zerglings are going to come out slightly on delay because the minerals to put down the hatchery eat into the minerals to build the Zerglings, so it takes a little bit longer. So you can go ahead and get that Nexus, but he is going to need to put down, yeah, cannons and a gateway and other things in front of it. So nice play right there actually catching the build order so it can actually make those comments this time. The Zergling's going to go ahead, and this is the thing with Rancor. We know, especially against Protoss, he likes early aggressive plays. Well, I guess it actually it's more especially against Terran, but he is the aggressor. I, I want to... What do I want to call it? Like, the pure aggressor? He is so aggressive in his early game play. That, that's where he likes playing, is going, doing a lot of early economic damage, or getting early contains, things along those lines, and then playing the match from there. Just grabbing gas uh, right this second, as soon as he's going to have 15 minerals. Looks like the gateway on the front door. Nexus is going to warp in. Pylon in the background, but Invisible Men Studios, from my understanding. I haven't seen a lot of his games. He also likes to go ahead and be sneaky. And look at this. Rancor already going for a third hatchery at... A, an atypical location, very typically when you see the third hatchery, it's going to be at this spawn at the 9 o'clock location, not at the 4 o'clock spawn. So it is possible he's trying to... So that usually indicates we're going to see three hatch mutalisk. Looks like a zergling got taken out on the front. It does not look like... I don't think they got the pro kill. Actually, still going... Wanted to... Got another pro kill, but was thinking about hunting up that ramp. But you can see the immediate reaction from Invisible Man to go ahead and continue to block that front door. And this is the thing with Rancor, yeah. Whenever you see him on the map with any sort of attack unit, you have to be wary. He's gonna go for another one. He's gonna be poking away at it. Does lose another Zergling, not quite able to get a kill. Looks like it, that probe is battle weary, but back at home base. Cybernetic score warping on, and actually the Overlord is gonna go ahead and see that. Kind of an interesting place to put it. Kind of telegraph it. Second Assimilator is warping in, so this is gonna be more of a gas heavy build. And the Hydralist then, is going alongside. So I thought three hatch muta, but I take it back. It looks like it is going to be some variation potentially of nine seven three. Although this is going to be nine five one. That's going to be well. We'll see if it's uh, when the hydralis production starts. That's usually kind of the indicator. We do have eight drones at the main, so it's looking a little bit more economically thin. A second probe scout moving out, and it looks like it's going to. So is it going to find this base? No. Okay. So it's not going to find this base, but it is going to walk into the natural expansion. And let's see if the Hydralisks start producing. Okay, so Rancor going ahead and dropping another round of drones. So that's going to get eight drones. So eight drones to compare with the... So, okay, basically 973 just across different patches 
uh, with this one right here. That drone critically being denied the information, so he's not going to know whether he should be planting cannons down right now or not. Going for armor one rather than weapons one to start, which would make Zergling stronger earlier, but that's going to make High Templar a little bit beefier a little bit earlier. He's got the Citadel of Adun's got that Stargate, but critically he's missing the information. So wandering up sees no third as well. So he might be thinking, okay, this is some sort of, potentially some sort of two hatch play, but he might be thinking, okay, maybe two hatch Mutalisk, but you can see he's not planning, he's not saving minerals to plant cannons down and Hydralisks are being built. Also, there's a creep colony on the front door. Kind of curious what the logic behind this creep colony was, but the Hydralisks are now going to be in full. It looks like a sunken colony just in case something slips by. I think that might be the logic here, is he knows Invisible Men potentially likes those shenanigans, but he went a Dragoon here as well. So Pylon preventatively being placed. A Templar, or very rapid Templar Archives. Maybe a Dark Templar will help on the front, but there is an Overlord nearby. If the Dragoon can pick off the Overlord, that might be uh, helpful, but it looks like there's already one preventative cannon. So Invisible Men's thinking, okay, maybe this is a bust, so let me get one preventative cannon down so that down the line, if there is just a full flood, I can just build the rest with it. Is he going to put down a 30? So maybe he sniffed this out, because that's going to be three cannons, but he's so unit light on the front, is still trying to create a Dark Templar, but honestly, this amount of cannons isn't going to be sufficient. Rancor now sneaking in. That Zealot's almost getting picked off. The Hydralisk surrounding the cannons. The probe's getting boxed off. The first Dark Templar is out, but that Dark Templar has Overlord Vision, so it's getting wiped out. That would have been much more effective if he had a way to take it out. A second Dark Templar, Invisible Men living up to his name, but again, the Overlord just slightly moving forward in position. That Dark Templar is out, and Invisible Men is out of the match on a very quickly, and a very well executed, I don't want to call that a 973, but three hatch uh, bust. Losing information early hurts, but I really liked Rancor's decision to grab this base at a, at the four o'clock position. And I call this the four o'clock, so six, four, six, five, four. I guess technically four is somewhere in this range, but whatever. You, I like the decision to take the hatchery at a non-standard location as to put Invisible Men a little bit more in the dark and uh, kind of throw off his game sense to not get the cannons down in time. But also, yeah, brutally not building a lot of zealots on the front to, to help assist. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see Rancor in the winner's match. We'll see Invisible Men in the loser's match. And we'll move on to the other side of the bracket momentarily. Thanks for listening.